Good morning, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Carlson. I'm a business student at San Diego State University. And right now I'm doing small odds and end jobs where I do see my business card says task helper, photographer and office assistant. So if you need me help, contact me. Thank you guys. Awesome. Thanks for joining Elizabeth. Next up we have Anne. I'm the um, I'm Ann Jarvis. I'm the director of USO on Camp Pendleton. So we're a nonprofit that benefits the military. Uh, and I've been with the chamber for a couple years now. So it's kind of uh, this is for my first time with the uh, young professionals, though. So long distance and all. Awesome. And then, um, Ann, I don't know if you want to share a little bit about your new business a little bit, um, just a teaser about what's to come for that. <laughs> sure. We're going to also join. Uh, my husband and I are opening up a Ford and Brush in downtown Oceanside on 109 South Post Highway. It's a wooden sign making workshop. So remember those wine and paint evenings that you could do? Well, this one is a wooden board that you get to paint, but you can drink wine and beer, but everybody has their own design. So you're not all making the same thing. And it pretty much, when you walk away, it looks like you just went and bought it at Hobby Lobby, but better because you made it. So. That's awesome. And maybe that in the future, when you guys open, that could be a cool young professional venue. Um, for for sure. So um, we'll definitely be talking a little bit more about that as we get closer to your opening. Um, next up, we have Nicole. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you all here. I'm Nicole Douglas with Enyo California. Enyo is a system of uh, chemical free and waste free cleaning products. Um, been with the chamber for about a year now and uh, just really, really love all the events you guys put on. So thank you. All right. Thanks for that, Nicole. We have Michael. Hey, guys. Uh, Michael Havland here. I'm a manager of government affairs for cost communications um, for the North County area. Um, and I've been working with the chamber for probably over about eight years, I'd say. Yeah. All right, thanks for that, Michael. We have Kaylin. Uh, hi, I'm Kaylin Daniel with North County Transit District. I'm the marketing, communi marketing coordinator, so I do all of our uh, digital media, photography, videography, and community outreach. Awesome, thank you, Kaylin. We have Haley. I'm Haley Wansley with Intesa Communications Group, and we are a PR and government relations firm, and I handle all of our clients from North County, um, Oceanside resident and chair of this committee. And congratulations, Anne. I remember when I first met you, and that was your dream, so congrats. Congrats, Anne. Quantel, you're up. Hey, Quantel Langford here with uh, Langford Design and uh, the Crater Brew uh, podcast, so uh, I actually focus uh, my main profession, I actually focus with uh, graphic design, branding, and uh, digital media for, for various companies, organizations, and um, small businesses, and then uh, have the Creative Brew podcast. Awesome. Thanks, Quantum. James. Hi, I'm James Prentice. I'm with Caliber Home Loans. So if anybody needs any mortgages or refinance, let me know. And I've uh, been with the Chamber for, this will be my first year. Awesome. Aaron. Hi, uh, my name is Aaron Gobitis. I'm the owner here at GoBe Rewarded. We do website, social media, video, and Google ads for about uh, 117 businesses along the 78 corridor. And uh, yeah, I've been a member of the chamber here for a couple of years now. And uh, yeah, and we're located right on the Vista Oceanside border uh, near, uh, right near Tri-City Hospital. Awesome, thanks Aaron. Storm. Hello, hello. Yes, my name is Storm. I work with Spot On. I'm the area manager for San Diego. So if you're working with someone else at Spot On, they are one of my direct employees. Um, so yeah, uh, here at Spot On, we help business owners with review generating, loyalty programs, payment processing, appointment setting software for business owners. Um, and we do some other stuff as well, but that's our main focus is loyalty, appointment setting software, credit card processing, review generating, helping business owners manage their business and grow. All right, thanks for that, Vinny. Hi everyone, uh, my name is uh, Vinny. I run a uh, real estate team in San Diego, also host a podcast like Quantal. Um, it's called uh, Road to Growth, um, going over adversity and how business owner, owners uh, kind of fight through that. Right, and last but not least, I know you just popped on, we're gonna call on you, Dana. Tell us, uh, tell us who you are and what you do. 
Oh, dang. Good morning, everybody. Dane Albert. I'm a senior financial advisor with Merrill Lynch Wealth Management in Carlsbad. Grew up in Oside, El Camino Wildcat, class of 94. That's right. I am much older than I look. Um, helping all folks make smart decisions about their finances, investment planning, and retirement planning. That's it for now, right? Yep, that's it for now. Thank okay. you for that. Um, so now that we know who's on the call, let's dive a little bit deeper into, you know, checking in with you guys and what's been going on um, with your business or your organization over, you know, the past couple months. We know there have been a lot of significant changes and, you know, I can share just from the chamber standpoint, those of you that were on the last call that we did, um, you know, we have been working, you know, flexible schedules at the chamber. We're able to do some remote work, but most of us are back in office and we are, you know, starting to accept some appointments. Um, our business is, you know, taking a turn for the positive right now. Things are growing, which means, you know, the business community is doing better um, itself. So, you know, when your local chamber is doing well, the businesses around us are because um, that's truly our lifeblood here. So um, that's what's been going on with us. Other than that, you know, a lot of advocacy work coming out of the chamber. So you're seeing a lot of letters just written on behalf of local businesses. Um, some sectors we've been focusing on are salon professionals. So we're lobbying right now to get additional salon services reopened if they're able to operate safely under the existing guidelines. So many of them are, and we're hoping to get them open um, over the next week or so. So stay tuned on that. If you know salon professionals um, that are looking to reopen and need assistance on information, send them my way or Hunter's way. Um, we'd be happy to help. So with that, I'm going to pass it off to Miss um, Elizabeth here and just share um, briefly, you know, what's been going on with you over the past couple months and maybe if there's an area where we can help. Well, I, I go to San Diego State, so I've been online for my last semester, which personally is great for me because I don't have to go down to San Diego State. I can stay here in Oceanside. And besides that, I've been working on this um, with a Zor organization through SDSU and Honor Society. And I created 500 letters to send out, just kind of like you were talking about, Emmy, to biz local businesses and hairdressers, postal workers. And they're gonna be sent out through Oceanside and San Diego, my tie, two ties. So that's been keeping me busy. <laughs> 500 of them was a lot. But that's it, me. That's how I've been doing. It's not really a business side of things, kind of just schooling and getting my name out there with things that I've been doing. So busy, but not busy at the same time. I hear you on that. And that's been uh, actually a challenge for a lot of business owners that we're talking to is, um, you know, they're, <clears throat> they're rushing to get their, um, their ducks in a row and they just are waiting on that approval. So it's almost that hurry up and wait, um, you know, mentality. So um, I hear you there. Next up, we're going to move on to Anne with the USO, and she's going to share what's been going on with their center over the past um, couple months and how we can support them. Yeah, so um, we are a nonprofit that's on Camp Pendleton, and so I thought we would have slowed down <laughs> with this, but we have not. I've been extremely busy. We are putting, we're known for doing programs. So we do emotional wellness and um, just morale boosting programs across the base. And we have really amped up all the drive through to goes. Um, every week we serve about a thousand some odd people with these bags that we do and they're all themed and they're usually for families. But um, if you guys didn't know, tomorrow's National Donut Day. So we're taking like 300 some odd donuts and a bunch of, I don't know how many dozens, but like a bunch of donuts to different commands across the base. So like just keeping busy that way. Um, we worked with Haley and Intessa with, they got us a donation of 300 bouquets of flowers. So we were trying to give bouquets of flowers away <laughs> just across and you'd be surprised at how small just even a bouquet of flowers brightens people's days right now. Um, especially towards the beginning of this COVID when everyone was really scared and trying to stay home and everything and a bouquet of flowers did it man they made them so happy so um that's kind of what we do and we're always looking to partner with people in the communities um we do i always have to preference it's like we do have a small budget because we're nonprofit, but we can pay good like discounted prices for services i mean we've been working with blade um they're doing pizza kits for us where we've been buying the dough kits and then we we're doing 200 families next week from Blade. We've worked with um, Fat Joe's 
downtown also. So we're always looking to partner with, you know, just our community because a lot of military families, especially the younger spouses, are kind of afraid to get off base because everything they have is on base. But I think Oceanside's so great. So I want them to be able to come out and, you know, get them off base and see what they have available in their local community. So that's kind of why I joined these groups. And Angela, a quick question before we move on. Um, you know, we're hearing from some more businesses that are starting to gear up their marketing efforts right now. And part of that is through some promotional items. So I've heard from some that are offering some hand sanitizer. It's branded though. Um, that's is fine. That we can send your way. Yeah, if it's donated, that's totally fine. We can put up and do social media posts and everything to, you know, recognize them for that. So that's great. Let me see who I can connect you with after this call then. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Emerald. <laughs> of course. All right. Next up we have Nicole. Um, so Typically, pre-COVID, I loved demonstrating the products in person and letting people, you know, touch them, feel them, try them out in their own space. And obviously that hasn't been an option. So just making that shift to trying to demonstrate the cleaning products online and really just focusing on the educational component with it as far as obviously it's no secret that we need to keep our homes and our workspaces clean, you know, now more than ever. Um, but we don't have to be poisoning our ourselves while we're doing it. We don't have to be bringing in the, the chemicals and the toxins and all of those other hazards that go along with it. Um, and at the same time, we don't need to be contributing to the landfill by, you know, going through however many disposable wipes and plastic bottles and paper towels and all of those things. So just educating people that there is a modern alternative to cleaning. You can keep your home healthier and safer and do right by the planet while saving yourself time and money all in one. So um, just trying to get together, you know, Zoom groups like this, whether one-on-one -on -one appointments or group demos, um, and just letting people know that what the products are all about and how to use them and um, sharing them with as many people as I can. Awesome. So we're going to move on over to Michael. I'm going to unmute your mic for you. And Oh, we'll move back to Michael. Um, we're going to go on to Kaylin really quickly. Go ahead, Kaylin. Uh, yeah, so uh, for the transit district, obviously our numbers are down as far as ridership goes. Uh, a lot of that, though, has been by design. We've been trying to kind of promote um, only using public transit when absolutely necessary, just to try and keep social distance and, uh, on everybody's mind. Um, so you know, we're always kind of talking about the future once things start to really loosen back up and we can start kind of promoting and, and trying to get people to trust back in the transit system and coming back uh, into the fold and kind of coming back into San Diego altogether. Uh, but one stat that came out a little while back, uh, Fox 5 reported on it and some other local uh, news outlets reported that some uh, 16,000 essential employees actually do rely on public transit uh, to get to work. So between us and MTS, uh, we are still really trying to provide as high a service as possible to kind of keep San Diego running and moving smoothly. Awesome. Thanks for that, Kaylin. We're going to move on over to Haley. Hi. Um, we've been continuing to have momentum with a lot of our clients to try to keep business going forward. We work for um, some examples, SDSU and their plan for Mission Valley. We helped coordinate the communication strategy to move that forward with the city of San Diego um, on their purchase and sale agreement. We're working with SeaWorld and Legoland. My boss is convening the theme parks to have conversations with the county to figure out how to safely reopen. And their plans are looking really incredible. So those will probably be slated to open about July 1st, which is a big deal for them. And I don't know who will feel safe going, but their, their plans look spectacular. So that's to come. Yeah. And then um, <laughs> locally <laughs> in North County, we've been working with the North River Farms team on their agrihood in Oceanside. It's a housing development that passed and was approved by city council. And then there was a referendum in the city of Oceanside to put it on the ballot to overturn it. And they reached those signatures. So now we are in the phase of moving that project and fighting it at the ballot to retain support. So as far as advocacy goes, we're looking for um, people who can champion housing and farming communities and that type of thing coming into Oceanside. 
Um, so that's kind of, that's where we're at. Sorry about that, my computer froze. <laughs> but thanks, Haley. We're gonna move on to Quantal. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, uh, as, as far as uh, I'm sort of in a weird um, situation where uh, oddly enough, uh, I have a lot of, probably more of my clients actually on the East Coast. Uh, I'm from Tennessee. So uh, sort of a weird uh, little dynamic right now. Um, um, you know, it's, uh, as far as with a lot of the, a um, lot of my clients, as far as with schools and organizations, I, I have a lot of people um, definitely ramping up their, uh, their marketing uh, efforts uh, with specific things. Uh, so I've, I've actually been more uh, busy with a lot of schools recently. Uh, you know, everybody, um, you know, trying to figure out the, the landscape uh, as far as how they're going to proceed with, with students coming back and, and um, you know, being able to uh, market and brand themselves, um, you know, digitally as well as, uh, you know, through, through print and other media. Uh, so, you know, really helping out other schools as far as, um, you know, developing a, uh, you know, a, a consistent brand story uh, to help, uh, you know, um, create loyalty uh, with their students, with their uh, parents, community, uh, things like that. So, um, yeah, besides that, uh, really pushing on the podcast. Um, you know, um, I, I've had a lot of uh, feedback from it. So definitely, um, you know, uh, I, I know M, you was on the, uh, the, the little uh, round table thing that's, that's actually getting released this coming up week. Uh, awesome. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I'll probably do it just through my podcast. I'm, it's going to be unedited. It's raw. Uh, so no, no filters, no anything. So that should be interesting. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's just one of those where, you know, doing my best to sort of, uh, you know, helping, uh, trying to help promote, you know, small businesses and uh, local businesses here, uh, as well as, you know, in other places. And um, yeah, just, uh, I think that's really it right now. What's going on? All right, thanks for that, Quantel. We're gonna move to James. Yeah, so uh, with the COVID thing going on, uh, it's making everybody, uh, <laughs> they're spending more time on their computer doing this type of stuff, which makes my life easier because now I'm to the point where I, if I said to someone, well, let's just get on Zoom and I can show you my screen so I can show you what everything looks like. Um, it, it, it's, people are more comfortable with it. It's making things move smoother. People are able to see what numbers look like when I'm setting them up with you know, structuring their loans. Now they can actually see when I'm telling them over the phone. So there, so, so it's, it's been helping a lot. So as far as what the chamber can do to help out, uh, you guys are doing great. And being able to get more people to do these types of things on these platforms is making things easier for me in the long run. So I'm good. Everything's running smoothly on my side. <laughs> That's awesome. That's the kind of stuff we love to hear. If we're um, making your lives easier and making it easier for you guys to do your business um, on the daily, then, you know, we're serving our mission, right? <laughs> um, we're going to move on over to Aaron. So go ahead and tell us what's been going on at your office, Aaron. Oh, well, it's been an a interesting last few weeks. Uh, we actually did open on May 1st um, or reopen the office on May 1st. I invited uh, the staff back. Uh, we did only get half of our staff back uh, and working in the office. Um, we've been able to, uh, you know, have some slight workarounds with that as well. You know, I have a big part of my staff that does not want to or the, or the staff that came back initially, they do not want to be wearing masks, gloves, or, um, you know, social distancing and stuff like that. They want a normal uh, work environment as before. So I actually do have a, uh, the main work room is, uh, you know, uh, is the, I, I don't want to say the normal room or anything like that, but that's the, you know, normal work area. And uh, I have my studio um, and we have a staff back there where all uh, county guidelines are followed. Um, so it's been an interesting, uh, split as far as the team. I've had to rehire some new people on the team as well, since, uh, only half my staff really, really wanted to come back, but, um, we are back up at full strength, which is great, um, for the team. A lot of businesses reopening right now, and we're able to, uh, really help them with their marketing efforts. Um, and, uh, you know, we're actually getting a lot of new business coming in too. a whole lot, you know, I think, uh, you know, the, um, 
the, the, the risk taking and opening up a, a little bit early really put us in a good spot to be able to help people out and do what we do best uh, here in our community. So um, as far as, um, you know, the, uh, you know, as far as you guys in the chamber can help out, uh, I, we've been getting just a lot of people coming in saying that like, hey, I can't get in contact with my old web person. I can't get in contact with my old ads person. They've kind of fallen off the map, you know, something like that. We're here, we're in the office. They can come talk to us anytime they want. Um, and I think just having that community presence has uh, really helped. Um, also, we're going to be uh, rolling out a new uh, initiative as well, which will help some of these local business, smaller local retail shops or people who may not have an online component to their business, kind of add an online component. Um, I'm calling it my e-commerce conversion kit. So if you know anybody who uh, would be interested in something like this, I'll give you a great example. Uh, I'm sure you guys all know the Carlsbad strawberry fields uh, that you pick strawberries. So uh, we were actually able to, uh, they weren't getting as much, you know, obviously the you pick strawberries coming in, they have been open this whole time, but just, you know, uh, people have been staying home a lot more. So we actually have been doing pickup and delivery produce boxes for them online. And uh, they've actually been doing gangbusters with that. But what my e online conversion, uh, what my e-commerce conversion kit will include is essentially our same, you know, service of doing the website, the writing, the video, everything like that. But what I will also include is I will be sending a staff member to your location to inventory, weigh, and measure everything in your store or anything that you potentially will be selling online. And this is the biggest problem with small business owners and going to the online marketplaces. They always want to ship things but they don't understand that in order to automatically calculate shipping and get the proper costs out of it, they need to weigh, measure, and take a picture of all of those items in order to get them on the website in the first place. So uh, if you know anybody that would be interested in a program like that, please send them over my way. Um, you know, we've been, we're, we're working on a few different local businesses right now, kind of doing that e-commerce conversion for them. And it could be either a way to completely put their business online or at least supplement uh, their business online. Good example is we have a local appliance store that is going to be doing the same thing. Um, and we're going to be converting them to have their inventory online. So people can at least look at the inventory online, but you can still go in the store and look at it. So um, yeah, a lot of really cool things happening here. And, uh, you know, a rough couple of weeks, but we're past that. Sorry about that. Thanks for that, Aaron. We're going to move on over to Dana. So just briefly tell us what has been going on. Um, you know, if you have any updates, I know you've joined us for a few of these calls and have given, um, you know, a great overview of just the finance sector. If you're seeing any changes um, right now, maybe you can share with us. That would be great. Okay. I'm actually busier than ever, which is part of the reason why we, I have a new partner. Katie couldn't make it to this call, but uh, I just want to highlight one thing that has come up that many people are probably not aware of from the CARES Act, which is coronavirus related uh, support. Um, you know, you have until July 15th to file your taxes, which also means you can make contributions to uh, a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA. So that's an opportunity. Uh, because there are a lot of people out there, wage earners, that actually have a little more cash right now than they did three months ago. Okay, well, a prudent thing to do would be to say, okay, well, why not open a Roth IRA and put two or three hundred bucks in there? I mean, you have this bonus money, don't blow it, start thinking about investing it. So that's an opportunity that I can help people with, and I can help anybody at any asset level, okay? We have an online platform, which is which is awesome for our millennials. Love it. MerrillEdge.com. Everything is automated online. Doesn't cost you anything. Easy to set up. Now, the other thing is with, with the coronavirus-related opportunities is, uh, let's say you're thinking about buying a house or maybe you, you're, you have a hardship need or maybe you want to buy a car and you need to take maybe two or $3,000 out of your 401k plan from your employer or your IRA. Well, you could take that out without the early withdrawal penalty right now. Okay, so you, you get to waive the 10% early withdrawal penalty and then the taxes you would normally pay on that withdrawal from your 401k or IRA, you have three years to pay that off. So 
young investors, young employees should be aware of these opportunities that are there to help you right now. And so a lot of time advising folks on that. All right, thanks for that, Dana. Um, and, you know, just one change, I know you've heard from Chamber Stop, but just wanted to point out, um, you know, for Hannah, you guys can send in, you know, any photos, text images, um, you know, to be shared to social media. She's been getting a lot of requests lately from our members, and we are um, picking up a lot, you know, proactively, but whatever you guys can send her in the meantime is always helpful, um, you know, just additional ways to promote your business. So help us help you. <laughs> Next up, we're going to call on Storm. So to just share, you know, what's been going on with your industry. I know you've helped a lot of businesses with PPP, setting up e-commerce platforms, and you've got a special offer on that. So um, the floor is yours. Thank you. Yeah. So um, we've been helping a lot of businesses with a lot of different things. Um, restaurants in particular, we've been helping them set up online ordering. Um, so a lot of restaurants that are local don't have the ability to have online ordering. Um, we can also do reservations for restaurants. So if you're looking, if you know a business owner that uh, is a restaurant, they need a reservation solution, we can help them with that. We also do review generating. So if you know someone that has a really poor reviews online, we can help them generate better reviews. Um, loyalty, help people keep coming back to your location. Um, but the main, the reason, main thing we're doing right now is giving all of our stuff away for free. Um, all of our software right now is free. If you wanted to sign up for our solutions with credit card processing and you want the review generating and you want the email marketing, you want everything that we offer, we can offer it to you for free right now. It's uh, company wide. So um, we're offering it for free for three months for any business owner that's looking for, like I said, loyalty appointments. We do standard websites, nothing crazy like uh, Aaron over there at Go Be Rewarded can do, but it's just a standard basic website. We can do something like that, super minimal. Um, and then, but the main thing we focus on is helping business owners with their reviews, helping them manage their online presence um, with, you know, posting stuff to Facebook, not pay-per-click ads or anything, but just little posts so they can post to Facebook and stuff to, and all that kind of stuff. So if you know a business owner that's kind of struggling looking to help get more people in their door, which is pretty much every business owner right now, that's what we do. We're doing that for free. Um, and yeah, that's me. All right. Thanks for that storm. Next up, we're going to get an update from Vinny. Hi guys. Um, yeah. So with everything going on, um, a lot of the, the real estate business has, has kind of uh, changed a little bit. Uh, so we've been doing a lot more stuff remotely, doing 3D tours, um, videos, uh, things like that. That kind of really made a big push uh, for a lot of like YouTube and things like things like that, just providing information. Uh, some kind of false narrative, narratives out there thinking that prices have gone down uh, under 700 and above 700 are two different markets. We actually have more properties in escrow under 700 than on the market right now. Um, so been kind of helping out clients that are under 700 looking to purchase and move up above 700 because that mark is actually different. There's more wiggle room and pricing up there. So I've been really providing a lot of information. And then of course the podcasts do that once a week, uh, trying to find, I mean, offer value and just kind of giving back to entrepreneurs like everyone on this platform. Okay, and um, really quickly before we jump into our next round, I wanted to let you guys know um, Romeo was on the call earlier and he's been texting me through this. He's just having a hard time joining it. So he may pop on to say hi, but um, if not, he does apologize and you know he wishes everyone well. Um, so we're gonna move on to our next round. <clears throat> we really wanna hear um, you know, from you guys, um, you know, because you're all in different industries, you're all in your own unique we want to hear, you know, what's most, um, what topic is most concerning to you right now related to your business. So, um, you know, as the chamber is taking action, we need that feedback from our members. So right now, um, I'd like to offer you, you know, each of you the chance just to share, you know, something that's affecting your business that, you know, maybe we might be able to make a difference on or, you know, you're just having some challenges. So I'll open it up because I know this may not apply to everyone in the group. So. Um, maybe just give you a couple minutes to think about that. And if anyone has anything to add, you can raise your hand and we'll call on you. And James, I don't know if your hand is raised or you're just- Oh, uh, no, I got stuff uh, I can think of. Um, one thing right off the bat is a lot of, uh, 
a lot of um, loan programs are on pause. Um, that's one aspect. Another aspect is uh, with a lot of people losing their jobs. Uh, if typically, you know, we'll do a verification of employment while you're buying a house. Well, now we do two of them. So right before we close, they check with your work again to make sure you still have that job after 30 days of trying to get a loan. So that's, an, that's another thing. Um, a lot of appraisers um, are not going and looking inside of homes. So the appraisals are tend to be a little more hands off. Um, and then a lot of people don't want to go look at homes either. So that's, they've been doing, you know, that's between you and your realtor, but there's, um, yeah, people are uncomfortable looking at other houses and some of them are uncomfortable moving. So it's kind of made purchases kind of stagnant right now. Um, but uh, refis are fine. But yeah, that's, that's the biggest, those are the, the big things right off the top of my head I can think of. Um, I don't know if there's anything that anyone can do to help that right now. So. Yeah. And this is just, you know, um, we don't have to answer that. Whoops. It says yeah. I'm signed out because I'm signing in on another device. Um, Hunter, Hannah, are you guys on the chamber? <laughs> um, the chamber account. Well, looks like I'm still here. So don't know what, what happened there. Um, if I happen to pop off on the call, that's why, guys. Um, <laughs> Anyway, we'll move on. If anyone else um, has anything they'd like to add or share, you know, challenges or, you know, an, an issue that's affecting your industry. I know there's many out there, so we want to hear from you. Go ahead, Storm. And my, my biggest challenge is acquiring new business right now. Um, obviously, as you guys could probably imagine, that's uh, my biggest issue. Um, cause for example, before coronavirus, <clears throat> I was getting 15 to 25 business owners to sign up for our services every month. Um, now it's closer to five, maybe 10. So, um, you know, a lot of business owners are kind of up in the air if their business is even going to be open in a couple months. Right. So for business owners that are not feeling that way and they feel like I need to do everything I can to stay open, um, let me know. That's, uh, that's, that's what I'm looking for. Anyone else have any, anything else to share? I want to give you guys an opportunity. Dana, I know there's a lot affecting your industry, so go ahead. Yeah, there's, there's a lot that people should be mindful of. You know, one of them was touched on by, by James. You know, you need to and, and um, Vinny, you know, looking at what's going on in, in real estate, you know, when people start looking at like interest rates, you know, and um, the stock market versus the economy, you know, they're not really the same thing, okay? Um, when, we're, when we're talking about interest rates in, in my world, we're talking about like what bonds are going to yield, okay? What you see in the media is the Fed funds rate, and those are all different things, okay? A lot of concern right now because of the Fed pumping or printing cash, right? And the Fed buying back uh, credit, which means they're out there buying bonds because people that are trying to sell their bonds when things got really bad, well, there wasn't any buyers for it. So the Fed and the government has come in for the first time uh, in this fashion to buy all of that uh, credit. So. What does this mean for all of us here on this call? Well, uh, chances are we're gonna see some pretty high taxes, income taxes in the future. So it's something to be mindful of, but it's certainly nothing that you should be fearful of. But that is a concern right now in the marketplace, right? People see the stock market going up and like, wait a minute, there's 18, 20 million people on unemployment right now, but the stock market is continuing to go like that. Why is that? Well, the stock markets are all very forward thinking, okay? And so, and they're also, people are investing for the long run, right? So of course we're in a short term unemployment period, interest rates are low. Uh, the, the, real, the real estate folks on this call would recognize that, okay, when interest rates are low for home, home mortgages, well, there's a direct correlation with home prices, right? You could afford to borrow more. So home prices aren't really going down. So another thing is like, okay, oh wow, I'm waiting for the next real estate crash. Okay, really? right? When, when a real estate crash is gonna be when prices go down, that's gonna be really hard to do with interest rates being really low for a long time. I don't know if you two on the call agree with me. 
Um, so a lot of fear and concern, but, and, and people are being over influenced by, by, by the media, which tends to highlight over negatively. All right. So you got to talk to a professional like Vinny, James, or myself, go back to your financial plan and say, Hey, um, what does my long-term outlook look like? Okay. Because it, it, your income taxes could be going up in the future. So you need to have a plan for that. Uh, one other thing I want to point out also is look, you know, we do, we do life insurance for clients too, right? So when you have a pandemic, you know, the underwriters that are um, approving these life insurance contracts, look, they're, they're being more scrupulous, right? But also uh, applications have gone up because people are like, whoa, I could have this virus. I could get sick and die. I know somebody who's, who got sick and died, um, did not, was not able to leave uh, financial proceeds for their beneficiaries. So part of your future plan should include that. And when you have pandemics or diseases and stuff like this that happens right now, well, guess what? That, that changes the approval rates in the actuarial. So, uh, those, so those are two things I wanna highlight, right? So what happens when a pandemic happens from a life insurance standpoint, and then the Fed pumping all the money into the marketplace uh, and interest rates, and how is that going to affect people's uh, ability to purchase products, homes, take out loans in the future, uh, et cetera. Thank you for that, Dana and Vinny. You have something to add there? Well, I guess if we're getting to the financial sector and all kind of stuff, I feel like I, I would be doing a disservice by not just jumping in. Um, so yeah, I think the, the first thing is, is that we, I think for a lot of us, I mean, myself included, and I got to be very careful about it, is we always find an excuse why we can't do something. And yes, a lot of people are hurt in what's going on right now. And it gives an opportunity to find a reason why you can't do something, why you basically can't do a workout, why you can't purchase a property, why you can't do whatever it is. I have the call on a daily basis with my team and I'm always kind of bringing them up, showing them what's really going on and how they can kind of think past it, how they're going to fight through it. And so I think that's something that can be very, very difficult, very tough. I mean, properties are still selling people are still buying, people are still um, purchasing their homes. Like um, I mean, my colleagues are talking about, rates are crazy low. We're looking at like, I mean, low threes right now. To give you an example, when they were in basically uh, the low fours, you could basically purchase a property at 640 roughly right now, 638, compared to a property at 600 when it was in the low fours. So you're talking about basically an 8%, I mean, somewhere around there, difference on what you're basically qualified qualify for right now. So even if prices go down a little bit and rates go up, are you really saving a monthly payment? Are you really saving on your purchase of your property? So a lot of false information out there, a lot of information, talk to a, a professional and have them run the numbers for you because don't focus on basically what can go wrong. Focus on your current situation and what can go right. Plan for it. Hey, if I can jump in there for a second, I'm seeing um, specifically what Vinny's talking about. I'm seeing a lot of people whose credit scores are like 680 or better, and I'm getting them 2.75. So th they are really low to, to what Vinny's talking about. It's, I, I think it's, it's even more what he's saying. So I anyway, just want to throw that out there. That's awesome, guys. Anything else to add? Any other um, issues concerning, you, you know, we're hearing, um, a lot of things just from employers right now about you know employees not wanting to return to work um, because they're making more off of unemployment insurance um, assistance. There's that issue, um, you know, childcare. Really, we just want to open this forum, um, you know, for you guys to share your concerns so we can pass those on to you know the decision makers and the elected leaders. So. Even if you're not comfortable to share it in this type of platform or, you know, it's just not top of mind right now, I'd like to invite you guys to reach out to our staff after the fact if it comes to your mind and, you know, send us your notes and what your, your feedback is on that because we'd like your voice to be heard. Um, so with that, you know, I'll close it off for that section. We can just open it up if anyone has any general announcements about your business or upcoming virtual events that you're hosting. I know a few of you, I've seen you on Facebook Lives, um, you know, and I know you have some podcasts coming out. So I'll give you guys a chance to make those announcements now. And you can just give me a, a quick hand up and then we'll call on you. So any announcements? Go ahead, Michael. Hey, guys. Sorry. <coughs> I have 
was in the middle of this. I didn't get to talk to you earlier. Um, yeah, so again, I'm with Cox Communications. Um, you know, we really, we saw about two years of bandwidth growth in the past 45, or the first 45 days of COVID um, with everyone moving to the home, uh, working from home, distance learning from home. Um, the uptick in utilization was just insane. Um, so we've been uh, actually deploying a lot of our uh, teams to go out and kind of do a lot of construction to um, split these nodes, get fiber closer to the home. Um, it's actually been a pretty good opportunity with a lot of the people off the streets um, to do the work that we, we've had planned for, for years out. Uh, luckily, Oceanside hasn't seen um, a lot of issues, but I do want to encourage anybody that um, if they do, are, are seeing issues, they are a Cox customer, um, my information is posted here. Please reach out to me. Uh, we just want to make sure that you know during this time we're we're able to provide the best service. Um, that's really the the main thing that's going on over at Cox. Um, but yeah, feel free to reach out, guys. Thanks. Awesome. And I see Vinny just dropped a YouTube link in our chat function. Did you have yeah. one quick thing to add to that, Vinny? Yeah. So I dropped a YouTube link. Um, I do a market update every Monday and Friday at four o'clock, and then buyer seminar, investor seminars, usually on Saturday. So if you have any, anything like that, uh, please follow. And then the other one is for the podcast every Thursday morning, uh, put out a, a new episode. Awesome. Haley, did you have anything to add? I don't know if your hand was up. Oh, okay, good. I just wanted to make sure um, I'm not missing anyone here. And I did have a brief announcement I wanted to make just on behalf of the chamber and the Vista chamber. Um, so if, for those of you that don't know, we've partnered with them in the San Diego Economic Development Council to, um, to put out a program called North County Cares. And for those of you that aren't aware of it, um, basically the program is for us to go in as chambers of commerce um, and business leaders to purchase, um, you know, significant amounts of gift cards at local restaurants. So these are starting in Oceanside and Vista, um, and we're seeking, you know, business support just within our membership right now. So a lot of the places that you may have seen um, on our social media being posted from Hannah, um, who created our like Don's Country Kitchen, I think um, just got on the list, Beach, um, Beach Break Cafe and some others. Uh, and where those gift cards are going, that they're purchasing are going to the local um, schools. So we're partnered with Oceanside Unified and Vista Unified School Districts on that that are in need. So if you guys would feel so inclined to check out the link that I just dropped in the chat function below, um, we'd love it if you could, you know, support it in any capacity, whether it's you just sharing it on your social media platforms or, um, you know, you're physically going on there to donate. Really, any effort helps. Um, it's just really us as North County pulling together to, you know, help our restaurants who have taken a significant hit during this time and a lot of the families um, you know, who have suffered a loss of income, you know, due to the situation. So um, with that, you know, I'll, I'll leave it at that. And, um, you know, since we have just 10 minutes left in the call, um, one more time, if you guys, oh, go ahead, Haley, did you have an announcement? I don't have an announcement. It's more of an inquiry to you guys. And if it doesn't come top of mind right now to either email Emerald or myself, but we want to continue to have these conversations with you guys. We think that it's valuable. And if there's anything you'd want to hear from like a speaker of any kind or economic development manager at the city an elected, a small business owner, um, some more information about the PPP loans, et cetera, how tourism is going to start back up in Oceanside. I don't know what the topic, but I, we want to make this relevant and a good use of your time. And I think that we're all um, able to touch base and, and hear where each other is at at this point. And so how can we move forward together and what kind of um, engaging things can we be flexible and bringing to this group? So I just put that out there. If anyone has any feedback now, great. If not, um, would love an email to Emerald or myself and we can get that scheduled and happening for you guys. Yeah, and just um, the only thing I have to add to what Haley said is that, you know, our staff here, we're, um, we're all ears right now during this time for, you know, ideas for these Zoom meetings. We want to keep them fresh and we want to keep them relevant. So, um, you know, that's something her and I have been discussing as we work closely on planning things for this group. So if you guys would like to see things like happy hours coming out or like Haley had mentioned, um, you know, getting some presenters on the call, please let us know, um, you know, what your ideas are on that. But with that being said, 
we'll go ahead and close out the call for today. Um, our next meeting, we can plan to meet the first Thursday of next month, which would be July 2nd. And we'll also meet at 10 on Zoom. So that meeting invite will be sent out to you guys. And um, you know, as far as the other chamber events for right now, all of those are scheduled for June through Zoom and they're on our website. So you can find out about those there. Um, we do have a leadership workshop that's coming out tomorrow. Our member with P3 leadership is hosting that. So if you're a CEO, you're a manager, or you really just want to grow as a leader, this would be a great workshop for you to attend. Um, we've got, you know, quite a bit of attention on this um, from a local level, but we've been getting some people um, from across the world coming to some of our webinars. So um, you'll be surprised at who you might see pop in on one of these meetings. But with that, um, I'll leave you guys with that. Thank you so much for joining us on this call, and we hope we'll see you next month. Take care.